weekly knitting podcast from Portland, Oregon. My name is Spencer, and I'm your host. If you want to find show notes, you can check out my blog, www.12ouncebeehouse.com. You can also find out about my sewing and other crafting and life in Portland. Um, if you want to follow me on Instagram, I'm 12 Ounce Bee House, and you can also follow me on Twitter as Lethal Cupcake. So how is everybody doing? Um, I know it's been a long time. I'm kind of looking at this as like Pick Up and Pearl 2.0. Um, if you're returning after my very long hiatus, thank you so much for coming back. If you're new, hi, welcome to the crazy. Um, if you're returning, you may notice that the background you see is now different. That is because I, um, that's because I moved houses. Um, we found out in February or so that we were not going to be able to stay at our old house where we had lived for three years. And so we scrambled and found a better house. And it's an actual house. It was built in 1956, so it's full of, like, mid-century goodness. And, um, it's got a lot, it has a lot more light throughout the day, though you probably can't tell it. I'm on take three or four. Dogs barking, cameras out of focus, all kinds of technical difficulties. So this one's going to look a little bit dark and I'll try to shoot a little earlier in the day so that I don't run into that. So let's start with my project for the outfit along. So if you don't know what the outfit along is, um, sewing blogger Lauren from ladybird.com and knitting goddess divine designer Annie Satterlin um, got together and decided to do a knit along where you have to make an outfit. So you have to sew a garment and knit a garment. So for my outfit along I am making the Myrna which is the pattern, the new pattern she released for the outfit along. And it's just a cropped cardigan with this cute little keyhole and um, along the top edge and down the back there's some, or around the top edge and the neckline there is um, eyelet detailing too. So that's awesome. Uh, yeah, I'm knitting it out of Madeline Tosh Vintage in the colorway Button Jar Blue. Um, and I picked this color to go with this fabric. Hello. Um, this is Michael Miller's fabric cameras in the retro colorway. Um, I love that there's everything from an old Polaroid camera to a brownie to a rangefinder, SLR. There's all kinds of like awesome old cameras on it. And I thought the fabric was super fun, so I had to do it. And um, I'm going to be making the Colette pattern, um, I've blanked on this name every time, it's not the Heidi, the Hazel, that's what it is, sorry. Um, I make that dress all the time. Um, I'm going to make the Hazel top but I'm going to make the skirt a little more gathered and a little and just under knee length instead of just over the knee to, to maximize the um, drama of the cropped cardigan. Next, let's do my other shrug. Well, this is a shrug, not a sweater. And um, this is Nemea by Carrie Bostick Hogue. Um, she's one of the Quince and Company designers, but this is not one of her Quince and Company patterns. It's one of her matter patterns. And, um, it's just a sleeveless, it's a sleeveless, it's just a sleeved shrug with, like, a big, floofy collar. So you just knit the sleeves and then make the collar. And, um, I'm knitting mine out of Cascade 220. And, um, I'll put a picture of her finished object in here. white because I have a lot of sundresses that would look really great with a white cardigan and I don't really have a white cardigan anymore um 
Macintosh kind of chewed all the buttons off of my last cropped white cardigan that I've had since I worked at a spree in like right out of high school so um that cardigan was well over 10 years old which is crazy and um he chewed the buttons off of it and I probably could save it but I just haven't gotten around to it so I figured I'd knit myself a new one so those are the big garment projects I'm working on um let's do my traveling socks next oh that's not my traveling socks these are my traveling socks. Um, I have one of my traveling socks done. It's been done for like almost a year now, which is crazy. I just got on the other ones before I got finished with this one. And um, this is my, the yarn is Hiawassee Creek Dye Works in Banana Pudding. I don't think she makes it anymore. Sorry guys. And um, I love it. It's the most sunny yellow ever. I can't wait to wear these. Um, I tend to wear sandals in the summer here because you only get three months of weather where you don't need socks. So I want to take full advantage of that. So um, I just cast on. I mean, there's literally, it's just the toe. I just got through the toe shaping, so I will start on that. It's 64 stitches around, high high uh, sharps, size one. Um, yep, afterthought heel. Simple, simple, simple. Um, let's get on to shawls. I have three shawls on the needle. Um, one of them is a deep UFO that I want to finish before fall this year because I have a couple dresses I'm going to sew that I think it will look amazing with. So, um, but. I'll save that one for last. So let's start with this one. I cast this on when we moved because I packed away all of my knitting and it hasn't gotten a whole lot of love since then, but I think I'm going to probably work on it a little bit tonight because I miss working on it. I love how this yarn works up. This is the Upper Cross Shawl and I'm totally blanking on who it's by. I'll put it down below. But um, this is the Upper Cross Shawl, and I'm knitting it out of No Maker's doppelganger set in the Milk and Cookies that she had at Christmas. Um, she's come out with a couple other of the doppelganger sets that are to die for. I love anything she puts out on this um, tweedy fingering yarn. It wears well, it knits up beautifully, the way she makes the colors darker and a little bit lighter is amazing. I'm so, I'm in, so impressed. Um, I have the pumpkin spice latte which I made mitts out of and it's just it's gorgeous. Um, I am trying to think of something else to make out of that. Maybe if I have a little bit of the cookie left over I can mix those two together because they look gorgeous. But um, I highly suggest your yarn. I love it. Um, this color is such a subtle like tan and warm brown like I don't know, I just can't, I can't. Um, it's amazing. If you get a chance to pick up some of her yarn, I highly suggest it. And I super, super suggest the, um, the tweed. It's unbelievable. Um, and it's not scratchy tweed. Like, I got it thinking with the, with the pumpkin spice that it would be tweedy, but it would be itchy. It's not itchy at all. I wear those mitts a lot. And they've held up, like, um, I wear them all the time. Um, because at night I have to wear something over my arm to protect my plate, which is why I knit so many fingerless gloves. And, um, they've held up. I've had them for almost a year now, and they're amazing. Like, I just love them so much. Um, so let's go on to the next shawl. I just started this shawl Sunday night after Colin left. I was feeling a little sad, needed something new on the needles. You know how that goes. So this is the... I don't know how to say it and I will look it up for next week, but this is the Lace Weight Martina Bem Shawl. And um, it's out of Madeline Tosh Prairie in the Nassau Blue colorway. I doubt the camera is picking it up, but I will take a photo and insert it here. So you can see the variegation of the um, yarn. It looks like a blue mass when you're far away, but when you get up on it, 
it literally looks like the ocean. Like when you go somewhere where the ocean is like bright blue and then like a little further out it looks like it's like that deep green and yeah, it's like spot on. Nassau is in the Caribbean. I've never been there, but I've been to other tropical locations and that's what this makes me think of. Um, I'm super excited for this pattern because you can wear it tubular of all the cool ways you can wear it and um, I actually have two skeins of Nassau blue um, but one of them is the other one is a little more green than blue so they complement each other but they don't match and um, the original shawl I bought them for they really needed to match so um, yeah I did that um, I've only started it um, it's a lot of stockinette, but I figure once I get done with my traveling sock, this can become a traveling project until it's just so big that I can't take it on the bus anymore without annoying people. Um, so yeah, that's on size 4 needles, I'm doing that. And now my deep UFO, and I don't know what's wrong with me, and she just, they just, she just announced another, um, she just announced another update with single so I may have to do that and um, this is the this is my bees to honey shawl and it's in plucky knitter single which may be my favorite base of plucky knitter I have a couple um, I have the bellow I have the sweater I have the primo and I have the single and there's something about the silk and the single that just makes this yarn glow. Um, it's gorgeous. I can't, I can't say enough about it. Like, I adore it. Um, so, yeah, I want to finish this before fall. Um, this is one of her, one of the Plucky Knitter kits. I think it was the Donut Season colorway and the orange color is sticky toffee and the gray color is fisherman's wharf um i think the gray and the brown look great together and i want to wear it this fall i want it ready to go as soon as pumpkin spice lattes are for sale so um yeah gorgeous i can't get enough um i'm definitely i think gonna have to order some more of the single when she has the update um yeah. So that's what I'm working on this week. Um, let's do a little like administration like thing since it's been so long. Um, show notes will be now at my blog exclusively. Um, I still have the Pickup and Pearl domain. I just want to give it a lot of love and attention. Um, and eventually they may be over there, but for right now, they're just going to be at 12OunceBeehouse.com, www.12OunceBeehouse.com. Um, the feed, you'll be able to get it on Vimeo and YouTube for sure. 100% for sure you'll be able to get it at those two places. You can subscribe in either place and then you'll be able to watch it on your Apple TV or on your phone or on your iPad via the YouTube app or the Vimeo app. I would love to put it out on iTunes for Downcast and all those other things, but... Unless it's changed a lot in the last couple months since I tried to do it before, it just took a lot of time away from knitting and away from other things I'm doing. I'm trying to run the blog full time now too and, um, well not full time, I'm trying to run the blog and post every day on it and um, do this too and I just think that my time could be better spent than like messing around with getting the iTunes feed to work. So, um, especially when there's such great options like YouTube. Like YouTube, I use the watch later and I will go through on like Thursday and pick like all the podcasts I watch. So, and I'll just put them in my watch later feed and then turn it on on my TV and it just goes like a TV, like a 
TV network from one to the next to the next. So then I'll watch like Knit Girls and it'll go into like Fat Squirrel Speaks. Then it'll go into like Knitting in Circles. And it's like I'm watching my own little knitting network without any commercials or anything. But I don't have to stop and get through. I can just keep knitting or cleaning or doing whatever I'm doing and it just plays. So I feel like the YouTube app and the Vimeo app have come a long way that that seems like a pretty good way to do it. Um, yeah. So I think that's it. I hope you all have a fantastic week. Um, yeah, I hope you all have a fantastic week. Um, knit, enjoy the summer. It's been kind of hot here in Portland. Of course, the summer we move away from the house with the air conditioning, it's actually warm in July, or in June. Um, yeah, so that's it. I'll talk to you next week. Bye!